love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Oh. I love you forever. Yes, I love you forever. I love you forever. Say to God a special love to him. Sing, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord.
Lord, we appreciate you. We declare everlasting love for you. We thank you for the privileges of life. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your lordship. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. You have a lasting love for us. And Lord, as we um, learn again tonight in yet another dimension, we ask that you quicken our understanding, open our comprehension, and help us to understand the things to be brought forth and help us to know how to align our lives uh, to live a good, a godly, and a healthy life. We thank you, Father, for answers to prayers because we are prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Help me welcome some close you and say you're welcome to God's presence tonight. Thank you, music team. Thank you. Um, before I bring our guest speaker tonight, I'd just like to bring to attention the reality that um, the society as it presently is uh, puts quite some pressure on people. Uh, people from all, all walks of life, unless you are so young that by reason of parental insulation, you don't have a direct interface with everyday life or you have become so old by reason of um, family support, you don't have direct interface with everyday life. And so someone who lives in a home um, all provided for, electricity supplied, please, I think the sound on this microphone can be better. All is provided for, regular water, regular electricity, food as a way. All you need to do is to get up and go and eat it, either as a child or as an elderly citizen. You find that you might not be directly exposed um, to societal pressure. Societal pressure is not only in the dimension of even our interface with the world physically, even our interface with the world remotely. And people, as a result of our interface with the world through social media platforms, news platforms. When you see on television, you see that a whole community is being shelled day and night. It can put some stress thoughts on the mind. Um, so people are going through a lot of stress, physically related stress, mentally related stress, emotionally related stress. And where these things are not well managed, they have a tendency to go off tangent in the mental health, in the mental health of um, people. So it's one of the reasons why we're having this special session tonight. Um, the word of God, third John chapter one and verse two makes us to understand the author of that letter wrote, he said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers the prosperity of the soul can uh, come on two dimensions because the soul has to do with our faculty where we reason we have our emotions we have our will and the prosperity of the soul can be fueled or funneled or fed through channel and through two channels just social knowledge, scholarship can feed your soul and it determines how your soul fears and how your life is conducted. Also, as a child of God, the things you contact in your spirit, the revelation of God, the revelation of his word, the revelation by the spirit that you use to govern your soul, to control your soul, can bring also a superior uh, feeding into your soul and so here this apostle said I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers and I believe it's on a backdrop of the revelation that feeds our spirit man that is used to govern and control the soul to prosper is to do well to prosper 
is to fear well. I'd like to read this translation of the Bible here. Um, the Passion Translation. It says, beloved, beloved friend, or beloved friend, I pray that you are prospering in every way and that you continually enjoy good health just as your soul is prospering. I pray that you are prospering, fearing well in every way and that you continually enjoy good health just as your soul is prospering. So when you feed your spirit man, you allow your spirit man to govern and control your, your soul, it can affect your overall health. And that's what brings about the prosperity. I mean, physical, I mean, prospering in health. And so here tonight, a combination of feeders from the word of God, from a Christian worldview, and also from a professional um, source, a source of a level of expertise, will be bringing information to you that you have to learn to disseminate and so that your soul prospers, receiving a convergence of those two supports, and so that you can be in health. God is interested in the health of the believer. God will not only affect your health just by laying on of hands or by healing anointing, information provided, revelation provided, uh, expert information provided can also help your soul so that it funnels into your body so that you can, we can live in good health. And that is why we have the faculty who will be um, sharing with us tonight. He's someone I've known for over 10 years. And he and his wife, they have a good relationship with me. We relate. And um, sometimes early this year, he brought to my attention certain challenges going on in the society and how God has specifically led him to get involved and beyond in addition to his spiritual involvement and responsibilities to learn to be trained and so that he can bring an added dimension of knowledge to people the members of the church and the society at large i want to share those things with me i pondered over those things and i felt these things would be beneficial to us in the local church and that's why in recent times we started to make the announcement we felt the announcement was not sufficient or i mean the short while that's why we uh, um, rescheduled this was supposed to hold last week but we had to reschedule to this week so that we can provide sufficient awareness to the members of this local church and so this evening we have with us he'll be sharing with us he will share his mind and then we'll have an opportunity to ask questions related to the line of his discourse with us um so we haven't our miss tonight the chaplain of the brookstone um, um international school that's the secondary school and then also like i said is an expert concerning mental health i'd like us to receive tonight for whatever uh, god and his learning has put in his heart for us shall we receive pastor olufemi julius Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, it's indeed a great pleasure to be here tonight. A great one. I'm going to take it for granted at all. Daddy actually said the thing about knowing for him. We've known him for about 16 years. The first time we connected with him, we married my just two. We lost two, two years ago. We married. And we had a very small television. More television like this. I don't know whether you have that type of day. And we used to watch that on television. I did my good service many years ago, so I had a little thing in the north. And I was in Christianity in the north and Christianity in the south. I said, Who is this servant of God? We we'll copy the four novels and one day we pray and we came down here. We introduced ourselves 16 years ago that we want to follow you, sir. And since then, he has been my father. 
Please let me put you on to do that for God's servants. If I had my way, I would leave where, I'm, where I am, whatever I'm doing, to come and continue to learn under him. Just like scripture says in Acts chapter 1, he teaches and he leads. I'm watching from afar, I've watched him closely. Many times I've spoken here for counsel, my marriage, asked for advice, and again and again, he never ceased to release these things. He's an amazing servant of God that I celebrate. You know, sometimes you have a leader in the house. You don't know his words. And I'm not saying that it's space. I'm telling you what I'm experiencing. And I'm sure maybe if not all of us, we are enjoying him. Sir, we appreciate you. The Lord will continue to strengthen you in the name of Jesus Christ. He's indeed a father, a counselor, a caregiver, a listener. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you. I, got, uh, I received a copy of his book, Grace, Exploring His Riches, given to me by Dikin Adelaja few years ago as well. I read that book. I'm like, wow. Grace in another dimension. I know I have a short, very short time, but let me say this. Uh, my, my understanding of grace, it took me to another level after reading that book. Thank you, sir, for what you do. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Lastly, if I don't say this, I'll be an ingrate. I'm not here to sing his praise. It's an opportunity. Let me say it. I've been attending Cabo for now for the last three, four years. Myself and my family will sneak in and all of that. But this last one, something happened to us as a family that only eternity will tell. Now, that meeting helped me to discover my installed capacity. That was the word I went to with. In fact, I wrote in my daughter, B, the BMIC. There are some things that are beyond my capacity. That I can't but there are some things that are below my capacity. But the one that God has given to me by that meeting, I have discovered it and I've been running with it. Thank you, sir. Next year, Cabot, myself and my family, we have taken a decision. We live very far. That's why we notice for those who know used to notice of after like so many we run we have decided we will rent hotel around here. We will not run away again. Thank you, sir. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. And the entire leadership, I appreciate you so much. And I celebrate God's grace in the house and all of the workmen. The Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. Okay, so let's share this together this evening. And I believe that um, this will help us as individuals and as leaders. Actually, the topic is, media, if you can just start with me, the topic is mental aid and leadership. Mental aid and leadership. So we're looking at um, uh, uh, assess as leaders, leaders in homes, leaders in the corporate space, in the work environment, business leaders, and spiritual leaders, leaders in the church of God at whatever level, departmental units, be as in leaders. You know, all of us, we've been taught in church that we have seed of greatness in us, so we are all leaders. Mothers, little children, daddy, lead everybody at home and all that. So this discourse tonight is to help every one of us who is operating in his or her leadership capacity. And I trust that God will drop something that causes a revolution in the way we lead and live our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to pray again that there is prayer, so I'm leveraging on the grace that he has released in the house. Praise the Lord. So media. Okay, thank you. All right. In the year 20, uh, 2015, the World Health Organization said that uh, going forward, on the basis of their research, they said 70% uh, of deaths that the world will be recording will be on the basis of five major diseases. They talk about heart diseases, cancer, diabetes. They talk about stroke and Group, a group of diseases that they put together that they call chronic egg diseases. They say that 70% of death going forward from 2015, and uh, if we have been privy to information around this area, you will agree with me that this is already happening. A lot of people you know, passing on, not fulfilling their destiny, not reaching their goal, not because of the devil, but because of these things uh, that was said, predicted by World Health Organization. And uh, you look at these diseases, not that they are that forceful, 
But because people have not paid attention to critical areas of their lives, and this thing has taken its toll or their toes on, on them, and it's begin to degenerate to the point of ineffectiveness or inefficiency. Some will even pass on instantly, and people begin to wonder. And we accuse the devil a lot. And I don't know, we get to a and say, devil, you keep saying, sorry, I wasn't there. You people pray and block me. I couldn't enter. So what kill you? What we've been saying is the devil. You say, I wasn't there. Probably something missing. And those are the things we want to look at tonight. I trust the Lord to help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me uh, lay this foundation, using myself as an example. Many years ago, that's 15, 14 years ago, before I entered fully into ministry, I worked with an organization and, and the lead engineer, and we work with uh, a, an oil servicing organization. So we work with major, major oil, uh, major oil company like Total here, Chevron, Shell, and all of that. I move around the city and beyond. And uh, at the particular, so I work in the safety department of that organization, installing safety equipment on the rig and everywhere. So on this particular occasion, I was given a task to lead and to get receive the cylinders, fill them, transport them back, and all of it. it took me like four days, as in back to back. I was having like three or four hours of sleep, each out of 24. Ladies and gentlemen, I concluded that job. I was remunerated very well. Good morning. But sir, the moment I got the call that Julius, well done, you did a good job. Less than four hours, I landed in Princess Hospital, Transamadi here. And I was there for like four or five days spent about over 100,000. I'm talking about that time. That time. A pastor came to meet me and said, you will kill yourself. You think you are smart. You, when you are reporting to me, you are doing this, you are, doing this, you are very happy. Only God saved you. So I'm just telling you how I did back to back to back to back for four days. I succeeded. I was remunerated. I mean, good money was paid and all of that. But I almost passed on. It's a serious matter. Just recently, another example. I'm talking about leadership and mental health tonight. That every one of us will, from this moment take a little, uh, a little effort to manage ourselves, manage our heads as much as managing our leadership responsibility. That's what I'm talking about. Something happened recently in my family, my wife and I. Uh, she took a decision, as just recently, as an example that some of us may be able to relate with. She took a decision, uh, and I wasn't privy to that decision before that time, but by the time she, we were seeing the, the results of that decision, uh, I wasn't too okay with it, but I had to manage it for that night. Ladies and gentlemen, that night I could not sleep. You know why? The decision she has taken, I didn't want to cause a stay. I didn't want to stop her. At the same time, I wasn't happy with the decision because I have a, like, if you do this thing for like 48 hours, this is what will happen. Sir, ma, the next day, I have to tell her that only I'm feeling sick. Say, what happened? I said, I couldn't sleep last night. She said, what happened? I said, this, this. She said, why did you tell me? And you're punishing yourself for nothing. I said, as a leader, as a husband, I was considering you. I didn't want to bug you and hit you and all that. I'm talking about mental load that leaders carry. By the grace of God, another example, by the grace of God, I'm a, I'm a counselor in a school, a chaplain, and all that. A young girl, 12 years old, a few weeks ago, before they went on holiday, asked, you know, she's been visiting my office. In fact, at the point, she wrote uh, more like, like five pages, and I'm not exaggerating, five pages. She just dropped in my office, said, Pastor, read, and call me back later. I took my time to read this, all that this lady jotted. You look at it, you almost want to conclude that this girl is having psycho issue. And that's very sensitive in an environment where I actually work. If you have to voice out that, you raise an alarm, the school will get involved, and the parent may not want to accept that. So I should do that meeting. She came under a canopy with sat down. I said, baby girl, why do you have to write all this? Is something worrying you? She narrated the whole thing. How she used the word, her mental health was disturbed. 12 years old. She used the word, I enter into depression. She's now in GS3. When she was in GS2, she said, you notice that I wasn't active in church and in school, that and my empire was destroyed. Ladies and gentlemen, what caused this for this young girl? The leadership inefficiency of the father. How he comes on and badge at them, no pursue them, and all of that. And she was like, excuse me, do they actually 
get back to me or someone else to the point that our grades were going down. God helped me to be able to help her. What am I talking about tonight? It's a pattern that will take responsibility for our earth. It is God's will, it is God's intent that we live very long, as in long, minimum 70. Is that your my correct, sir? According to scripture, maybe 70, maybe less, but at least enjoy and fulfill purpose. But if our health is not in shape, that will be a mirage. Am I correct? That will be a mirage. And that's what we want to treat tonight. So let's look at a few scriptures and run. Let me leave the four examples that I've tried to uh, pass to us regarding the subject of mental health. Okay. The first scripture here. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30 from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Let's just rush these scriptures so that we run. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30. Okay, we have it there. Thank you. Proverbs 14, 30. Not 20. 14, 30. 14, 30. Okay. It's a, a calm and undisturbed mind and heart are the life and health of the body. But envy, jealousy, and wrath are like throatiness of the bone. This scripture looks so simple, but if you look at it very well, it says something. It says, but envy, jealousy, wrath are like roughness of the bone. And these are things we experience directly or indirectly on a daily basis, particularly from people who are not in the fold, in the work environment. We meet and see them. Let's check another scripture. I'll just read through them so that we can go to get to the heart of the message. Of the discourse tonight, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 12 to uh, 15, from the message version. Proverbs 16, 12 to, okay, it's a good leader, abhors, good leaders abhors wrong being of all kinds. Sound leadership as moral foundation. Next, please. Good leaders cultivate honest speech. They love advisors who tell them the truth. Next. An intemperate leader wreck havoc in lives. You are smart to stay clear of someone like that. The last one. Good tempered leaders invigorate lives. They are like springs, spring grain and sunshine. These are scriptures that look so salient, not too loud, but very powerful talking about leaders. And like I said at the beginning, either in the corporate world, in the church, in the family, in your business space, you are putting as a leader in one way or the other. You are exposed to all manner of things and all manner of people putting pressure, as in putting pressure on you directly or indirectly. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, so let's go further. Let's leave the other scripture, but we can write them down in case you want to Read them for that. That helped me to pick one of them of the scripture that I have. The next one is Psalm 41, verse 1 to 3, NLT. The fourth one is Third John 1, where that uh, led us at the beginning. So let's go on quickly. So we are looking at mental health and leadership. Very important. Let's just dive a little into a few things. Uh, what is mental health? Media, please go back to mental health. Don't talk about mental health. What really is it? Uh, it's said to be a state of mental well-being. You know, yes, we are trying to be you have a spirit, you have a body, and the soul in between. But our ability or inability to be able to manage our body that house our mentality uh, is we affect the functionality of the rest to a very great extent. And it will be wisdom on our path as people of God to be able to manage this body that house our soul and also our spirit. God respect that we apply that wisdom. So mental health is talking about it will help us to be able to relate with our environment. When your mental health is in shape, when your personality is in shape, you'll be able to relate with your environment effectively. You'll be able to affect your environment and people that live there effectively. You'll be able to impart your world, impart your community. Your mental health, I say here, is as important as your spiritual health. Please, media, are you okay? Good. Thank you. We are, we are seeing that. I'm not seeing this. Okay. 
Good. And just recently, mental health, World Mental Health Day was celebrated on the 10th of October. And uh, you know, it wasn't, the noise wasn't that much. So those of us that are very, uh, maybe in that area, we paid attention and we listened to all that you've got to say. But that's not even my point of discourse tonight. Let's look at the awareness. What's something, like something that's called the awareness wheel. Your wellness as a person is in this wheel. Your total wellness. If you are able to manage this wheel, you will function almost, almost 90, if not 95 percent. Your efficiency will be top notch. Your productivity will be so high. Your impact will be visible. And you'll be happier. But ladies and gentlemen, not everyone is able to, to work in consciousness of this will. And that's what I'm trying to bring to our consciousness tonight. That yes, as spiritual, very, very fantastic, very important. But it's also important. You agree with me. Look at the financial part of it. If your finance is not okay, as in very, very low, very, very, very low, as in fact below zero, we will be able to function very well spiritually. Maybe no. Thank you. I saw, I've seen one of our leaders say, yeah, maybe no. You will not be able to function. You come to church, they are thinking you will take the moment, pastor, I don't know the pastor that usually take off from here, as he or she steps in, somehow you don't as if you just disappear from church. And you, you are still a, a child of God, but because nothing in the pockets, you have not, you don't have a job, so it's as if you, you are just, you just ate everybody for like two minutes. You ate the ocean carrying the oven bag. It's not, I'm not going to Just because your, your, the financial part of your wellness wheel is very low. It's a serious matter. You are very good in your workplace. But over the weekend, you are not in the office. You feel so bored. You see, okay, you are not going to say, I don't have friends. Your social life is so... You are not connected. You have phone, you don't even use it. Is it internet? No, me, I'm not an internet person. No, I don't, uh, I don't want anybody to encroach into my space. After some time, you begin to suffer depression and you will not be able to talk to anybody about it. Are we together? Because, social, because of time. And in the course of you relating with people, either in, as a family, the workplace, in your business, or even in church, you begin to realize that what they are releasing back to you is taking its toll on you, but you can't tell anybody. And it begins to affect your health. And leads to what we call mental illness. Not that you are sick, but something is going on wrong in the negative. And God is saying, it's not supposed to be like that. So what is, what is mental illness? Please, okay, thank you. We can sit there. It's like you're talking, it's include, a ment it's include mental disorder and, psych and uh, psychosocial disabilities as well as other mental states associated with significant distress, impairment in functioning, or risk of self-harm. What is this saying here? Mental illness begins to happen even though the person is still able to carry his or herself, is still able to run here and there, is still able to even function in the office, but he is not able to function at his peak. He is not able to be at his very best. Something is going on somewhere. And nobody seems to notice. He himself sometimes may not even notice it. That's mental illness for you. And that will affect with time his effectiveness, his productivity, his relationships. You say, Oh, you are not smiling this morning. Saying, I don't just feel like, oh, 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 what do you say? I don't know. Just, just leave me. Just leave me. Listen, maybe he's not be able to sleep very well. Maybe he's having tax in the office that is affecting. Him and he's feeling, oh, we we'll are be able to meet up with that. Just consider ladies and guys who get to, who employed in banks or maybe other organizations and they are given marketing responsibility. Say, this is your target. Bring like 500 million in, in a quarter. Excuse me, am I down with a younger brother? But that's the task if you must be promoted. That statement alone can begin to give that young girl mental disorder. Are we together? Yet on Sunday, she'll come to church. But she's not able to be at her best because someone make his, gave a statement that's a little bit beyond her capacity. If not help, she begin to lose contact with friends, relatives, colleagues, and she they just say, "This guy, she shoot the tire, she shoot the tire face." No, not that she the tire face. Something is eating her up. 
affecting our wellness. Praise the Lord. Okay, so we have a few statistics here. You can see them. You say one in every eight people in the world live with mental disorder. Please, when you see the word mental disorder, we're not talking about insanity as in those who are naked on the road. But something is not just balanced in their sensitivity. And it's important that you and I should strive not to be in this statistic. And you will not be there in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying for you. I say you will not be there in the name of Jesus Christ. The other one is nice. Let me just move on to the next. Please go to the next one. Okay, please. Yeah. Look at these global statistics. Very real. From World Health Organization. Very real. And look at mental health that we are discussing this evening. 35% of mental health. On, as, mental health is taking 35%. And this is serious. Let's move on. Look at the other ones. I mentioned this at the beginning. I, because of time, I really want to rush to what are the, these little things that affect our mental health that we were talking about. Here in Nigeria, it's a 60 million Nigerian are said to be suffering from mental health issues. 60 million. These are available statistics that prove, as in Nigeria. And I even have a feeling that this statistic is not correct. Hello? <laughs> it's not correct. It's not correct. If you want, uh, the, late, the latest information, they say Nigerians, uh, 143 million Nigerians are suffering from multidimensional poverty. I'm sure we have heard that word. If 143 million Nigerians are suffering from multidimensional poverty, then you can imagine that majority of the people in that 143, they should have mental problem. When you say mental problem, please don't get me wrong, not insanity as in misbehaving, but they are they're having things. Please put this entire slide. Put everything so that we can see example of what we, when we talk about mental health, examples of things that come under this mental health. Example of things that come on, thank you. Like having anxiety disorder that things at any point in time. Your BP will just rise. Hide out what you have heard, what you have seen, what someone is saying, or what you are expecting. Just distort your system. Depression, like I mentioned it earlier. Maybe prolong impact of one particular situation that is not you are not finding funny begin to make you to feel low begin to feel low and you probably you can't confront the situation because of maybe it's beyond your proving you can't handle them yes you come to you can't even discuss it with your leaders bipolar disorder today you are very excited tomorrow you are down you say, Auntie, what is wrong? You say, that's the way we behave in our family. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. He or she is going through something that he doesn't know how to even confront. Even in the place of prayer, he doesn't even know how to address the issue very well. I wonder, I used to say this, and I stand to be correct, there are three different uh, churchgoers uh, regarding reading the Bible. Those who read the Bible religiously, and they forget. Those who don't read at all, and those who read and work with it. Can I repeat it? Those who read the Bible for reading's sake, ask them 30 minutes after. They can't remember what they read, but they actually read the Bible. And they are smart too. Those who don't read at all. And those who read and profit with it. I've asked this question among young people where I'm like, God help us. Why is it that a believer, a tongue talker, will read the Bible and not remember? They are fool. Hello. They are fool. Plenty thing there. Plenty thing there that is not able to put together. So he's under pressure. And that's a fraction of mental health. So we have other examples there. Um, PTSD, schizophrenia, eating disorder, destructive behavior. I've seen a lot of young people who call themselves computer guru. I realize that they look a little bit different from everybody. They look different from smart, as in you can call them addicts to their computers, to gadgets, to forces. Do we have, we have almost beg them to eat? It's an abnormal situation. And you know, it's an abnormal situation. Because it has its long term effects 
on that young man. You get married, you don't have time for his new wife. You will have families, you will not even have time. Say, I'm coming, I'll call you back. He will not call back. He turns a liar. Because what? He's getting addicted. And he's using that to cover up a pressure. Are we together? But I see the Lord helping us in the name of Jesus Christ. So let's not go a little into leadership because the discourse tonight is mental health and leadership. I want to quickly balance it before we provide a solution as God has given me insight. We have different school of leadership. Please project all of them because of time. I'm sure we are all aware of this. I want to believe. Peter Drucker's feeling or thought about leadership he said leadership is doing the right thing. Fantastic. I know I gained that. John Maxwell, the great writer, he said leadership is influence. The other one, Steve Jobs, passed on now, the, the owner of Apple. He believes in innovation, that leadership is about innovation. Innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. And the last but not the least, even our, our, our Lord Jesus Christ, his own view, concept that we've adopted and believe and we are working with. In the kingdom is what? Leadership is what? Leadership is what? Service. If anyone wants to be great, we have the scripture there. I don't want to do all the bad teaching tonight because that's not my assignment. That is there. I will be hearing that. So if anyone wants to be great, he or she must do what? Serve. But ladies and gentlemen, all of this highlighted doing, influence, innovation, persuade, and service. They all require action. Am I correct? They all require you to do something. And if that be the case, these are the things that bring pressure on leadership. Remember, I'm talking about leadership either at home, in the workplace, in your business space, and even in church. You are leading a unit, you are leading a group, you are leading a department, and all of that. All of this, functioning in this area, bring pressure on you directly or indirectly. Now, let's go a little further. Let's look at examples of leadership in the Bible and how these men of these people handle their own leadership responsibility and they fulfill God-given purpose for them. We have Moses in scripture. Please put all of them, thank you, because of time. We have Moses, we have Daniel, we have David. I just picked this few in my reading. How we you know the story in Exodus chapter 18, how Moses thought he was leading the people and, you know, this long queue of people and all of that. And it, God had to come through his, his father-in-law. Young man, you just die and we'll bury you and we'll still continue to live as Israel. Apply wisdom. Do this, do this, do this. We know the story. Daniel again. In, in, please give us that scripture if you can give us Daniel chapter 8, verse 27. Daniel 8, 27. Can you please give us Daniel 8, 27? Amen. Quickly. Daniel 8, 27. Thank you. He said, and I, Daniel, fainted. Hello? And I, Daniel, fainted. I was sick for this. Why? Why? Daniel, he said he fainted and was sick for this. The question is, where was God? God knew him. What happened? You see, after what I arose and went, blah, blah, blah. But probably this could be could have been avoided. Why do you have to faint? Why do you have to experience long days of sickness? We don't even know the type of sickness. Look at David. You can write the scripture down. I'm mindful of my time. But the truth is, please put the other thing. Press the other thing. For us as leaders, if we are going to fulfill our leadership grace, uh, uh, responsibility with grace, we must know this, that true, effective, efficient leadership starts with self-leadership. You must be able to lead yourself. And actually, self-leadership is self-management. As I speak to you right now, I'm running a camp somewhere on South Road. I have a team. Capro uh, Mission Organization, they are running a camp, and every year, they usually call my my group to come and take care of their teenagers. We have close to 200 teenagers in that camp. I have a conference tomorrow somewhere. I say, I cannot kill myself. I showed up there just one day. I've trained the people weeks before now. Must I be there? No. And I know I have this meeting. I have another one. 
tomorrow. But you know, an insecure leader say, You show up there, I will let them see you. You want to do everything. After, after the camp and everything, on Monday you do a psychiatric hospital. God forbid. Because if you are not able to manage yourself very well, the work will still go on. Hello, there are managers in organizations. You know, they come with this carry that I'm the most resourceful person in this organization. It's a lie. It's a lie. You are not the most resourceful. Maybe for now, you think you are. If you move on, you jack on, or whatever. The business, the program, the, everything will continue. And maybe God's design is that you stay longer and bless us more. So, in the school of leadership, self-leadership is actually self-management. Now, let's go to this other one that I believe will also help us to discover a few truths about leadership. And all of us seated here tonight, we are all leaders. We have our father in the house, he's a leader, no doubt, but even those of us, you say, but I'm not in any department, I'm not in HOD, I'm not in my office, I'm, I'm the least, they just employ me too. You are still a leader. If you have someone behind you, that is looking up to you. But let's get these few truths about leadership. The first one is the fact that leadership is very tough. It's very tough. And it's important that anyone in leadership understand this. Yes, in, in church, when we are called into leadership, we are prayed for. That's why as leaders, by the wisdom of God, they pray for us, they pour on us, they even lay hand on us. That, and that lane of our is to reduce the pressure that will come with the responsibility of leadership. Yes, sir. Otherwise, this young man, you can't stand it. But leadership is tough. And when you say something is tough, you are saying it is difficult. It's not easy. It's not easy. Managing the five M's in management. Managing money, managing men, managing machines, managing methods. At the same time, it's not, it's not easy. It's not easy. So leadership is tough. The next thing is the fact that leadership is tedious. And the word tedious is talking about something, something that can wear you out. Something that is tiring. Leadership is tedious. Next is the fact that leadership is tearful. As in you, sometimes in leadership, you set tears. Either physical tears or invisible tears. Are we together? Are we together? You shed tears. Pain of the fact that you put this in, you decide, you, you, feel, you, have, you, have, you, have, you have poured out your heart to your followers or your team members and you expect that by social and social time you should be able to get this done only for you to realize that you are on your own. Only for you to realize that all of them, they've dropped the ball. And you must not insult them, particularly leadership in church. You insult them, you pursue everybody. And your main or guard, you say, no, pastor, we deal with you. So you shouted for them. Are you the one that brought them to church? Is it your blood that saved them? So you're not supposed to shout. But you get to your house, you're praying, you're crying. Oh, a program is coming. Maybe you heard the bill of, oh, they say our department, maybe 500K. And I hope the people will be able to. You pray, you're praying, you are praying, God, to finish that. Leadership is tearful. Leadership is also a training time. I remember many years ago when I was doing my youth service. Let me not mention the years, but it was 19 something, 1990 something. When I was doing my youth service in Bimbo State, when they called me out to come and be a leader, I actually cried, sir, physically. The papa then, we called papa, yes, papa, he hugged me out. Now I'm very robust, though. Very, I'm very robust now. That time, more like a broom. I studied engineering and I don't know whether it was that thing that drained all the blood in us. Very lean like this. I said, how can you people pick me of all people? I was crying like a baby. But over time, leadership has trained me. And I'm getting better. What am I saying? Leadership is a training time. And training, real training is not easy. Leadership is tensive. It stretches you. Takes its toll on you. It strains you drains you. Next is the fact that leadership is time consuming. Listen to servants of God like Bishop David Rico that says that you only sleep like is it two, three hours? I'm like are you robots? That's some of us here because of the responsibility of leadership particularly maybe in our workplace we sleep like maybe five hours or four or even three because you want to meet up to um, the task given to you. Leadership is also a text of your character. 
We know all of this, but I'm just laying a foundation that we can get to the core of the message within the time given to me. Leadership is also a test of your character. A very gentle, unassuming, easygoing. But when you come into leadership, in fact, probably the leadership that brought you into leadership, we say, don't look at their faces. You are, we have looked at few things that you and we believe you can deliver. So go there. You know what they are saying? Go and harass them and get the job done. Go and, go and push them. Go and, like uh, the workmen of Pharaoh, the way they dealt with the children of Israel. Go and, go and make them to work very hard. All I want is results. All I want is results. Praise the Lord. And here you are, a believer. You must display the nature of Christ, gentleness, care, very obedient, and all of that. How do you manage this? How, if, you are, if you are too gentle, they could even take you for granted. And yet you are a leader. And you have responsibility. And you have to deliver. Leadership. I also find that it transforms. That the danger is either to the positive or to the negative. But to, to move away from this point is the fact that your mind, your mood, your mental capacity, your memory, I found out including your body and spirit, are all involved in leadership. In church, is your leadership responsibility and, and the display of your leadership is not only going to be on the basis of the fact that you are spiritual. You're going to learn certain skills, how to communicate, how to relate with people, how to be able to bear with people, how to be able to, to understand people's body language while leading them. You are leading a group in the church and a member of your department comes in late. Maybe you are this kind of you are a disciplinarian that you don't take nonsense. And you want to badge. Ah, sister Juma, why are you just coming by this time? But we say we are going to ah, thank you, sir. She quietly said, I'm sorry. But well, believe you me. At the end of the year, she may write this note and say, Sir, I want to leave that department. Why? My guy shouted at me four months ago. It takes grace. Leadership is not as easy as we think. I can imagine, recently I was discussing with some friends, so how did Jesus manage Judas? If he knows all things, and you know that this guy is privileged, entering to the post, and they take money again and again, but you didn't bother to rebuke him. How? How do you? So one of, our, one of my friends said, probably he was waiting for the fact that, okay, this guy will change with time. But he never did. And there was never a time Jesus would say, oh boy, come here. I know the spirit of thievery is in you. Come here. He did not. He left him. Of course, we know the stubbornness of Peter. That was even comforted the boss. Say, say today, <laughs> Jesus had to rebuke the devil that entered into him. Hallelujah. Leadership is not as easy as we think. That's why Paul has to write, say, pray for us. I say, pray for us as your leaders. Pray for us as your pastors. Any church that is not praying for their pastors, they are not doing the right thing. Because I tell you, it's not as easy as we think. And it's not just to pray, the Holy Spirit is there. I know the Holy Spirit is there. Praise the Lord. So, the truth about leadership, it is it's tough, it is tedious, fearful, it's a training time, it's tensive, time consuming, you agree with me. It's a test of your character and it transforms over time. Let's go. Now, in the school of leadership, I want to tie this up to tie this together. I'm saying this so that we can know uh, the demand on us as people who lead. And if we don't take decisive action, okay, I think we've read this scripture. If we don't take decisive action, these things can bring us into a level of ineffectiveness. And if you work in an environment, if it's in an environment where they rate you on the basis of the result that you bring in, your performance. You're going to be praying, Lord, I want promotion at the end of the year or in the new year. Ah! It's not as easy as we think. When you are in leadership, there are prizes to pay. And there are pains to bear. Let's look at them. The first one, the price and pain of leadership. I'm, we'll be, we are discussing this because these are the things that affect our mental health. That's why I'm going, so that we don't get it. We, I want us to get it. What all this one I want to show us now are the things that affect our mental health. 
that affect our productivity as leaders. And that if we are not intentional about, about these things, about the position and the responsibility that we are occupying, either leadership in the family, leadership in the, um, in the corporate environment, in the workplace, leadership in the church, or in our individual business, we will not be able to get to our zenith, not able to get to our peak, we will not be able to get the kind of results that we expect. Okay, you put all, fantastic. Let's take time to explain them one after the other. But I would have loved the fact that the way I arrange it, let them slow in one by one. But it's okay, let's fly. The first one is the fact that leaders, they suffer the pain of being, in, mis, being misunderstood and misinterpreted. Am I correct? Again and again. Sometimes we follow them. We don't know. You don't know the pain, the beer. You're giving an instruction. Someone did not get it right. And he or she will just go and say, okay, go and buy me my son in the house. My son is 11. Because he's very active, the boy now, very active, he's very love to energy. As you are giving him instruction to go and do something, he's already on his knee, flying out. He, he will have gotten to like half of the world, come back, come back now, Clarence, come back. I'm saying you should buy so so and so. If I have one particular day, he went out and bought something else. I came back to the house. He said, I thought you said it. I said, I know you. Why didn't you take time to hear me very well? Some of us, we see this at home, in the office. You give a subordinate instruction as to what to do. Say, do you understand? I understand. Have you read my mail? Say, I've read it, sir. No problem. By the time you will bring the job <laughs> on Monday, you, as you are seeing it, something just happened to your head. Am I speaking? And you can't slap him. The worst you can do is query. That's the worst. Because even to sack, maybe the power is not in your hand. You now have to start again. Hey, sometimes we are misinterpreted. We are misunderstood. What about false accusation? I work in a place, my first place of work in Kano State when I finished my youth service many years ago. Long story short, this young man, something happened, and the, my HOD, in the engineering department, I lead the group, then we have the manager in the engineering department. Something happened, and they brought me, and the guy knows that, the leadership knows that ah, Femi is the pastor, he will not lie, and all of that. They brought me and this young man again and again. Who did this? I said, Sir, Mr. Engineer Mackin, I just remember his name now. You know, you know me. I stop. If I've done this, I will tell you it's a mistake. After all, there are, there are room for errors in engineering. So I said, Sir, it's not me. I don't know. And the guy, the guy is swearing from Plato State. Swearing, he says, Sir, it's not me. Sir, this. At the end of the day, we manage the situation. Ladies and gentlemen, as we're walking out, the young man held my hand like this. He said, Oh, me. I know say you did this, but please you have to forgive me. I have to lie that you did it because I know say they no go feel sack you. But if I say I did it, they will sack me. I said, why didn't you tell me before so that I will know how to package the thing? He said, no. Ha, Jesus, I can't forget that situation. It was painful for me. Because my boss already said, no, 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 Management will hear this. How can you? And when we change your position, I've given you position of responsibility. I said, so, engineer market, if I have done this, I will let you know. You are the one leading me. This boy was rolling on the phone saying, sir, I swear to almighty God. Sir, I swear to him. As we were walking out to the canteen, he just came and said, sir, I can't remember his name. He said, why are you here? He said, I know you are angry. He said, oh God, I will not lie to you. I did that thing. So why didn't you say, say, if I say it, they will sack me. But they can't sack you, you will be goga. False accusation. What about disloyalty? You have people in your team that you believe they understand you, they believe you, but what you get to hear about them in the background, <laughs> you feel like, oh, these people are not sincere. And the rest like that, I need to run. I need to run. I think my time is almost up or something. Leadership takes its toll on you. Sometimes you are tired. Sometimes you are criticized because you are in the position of leadership. Sometimes the fear of not meeting up, the fear of failure. What about unmet expectation? What about rejection? What about the, the fact that you want to effect change? It's not going to be easy as we think. I have this. Please give us the next slide. Language, particularly in the workplace, these are things we get to hear from our leadership in our workplace, whether from the MD, the manager, or something, because the organization wants to move to the next level. They just reel out this statement, and when you are hearing it, to execute them, eh? <laughs> it can kill. 
When you hear, when we are doing acquisition, you, you know what it means to acquire another organization or another institution? But they don't make that statement thinking that you are what it takes. Maybe you are first class in your university. You can get it done now. It's not as easy as that. They are give, that statement is giving you serious headache to effect that acquisition. Alliance, flattering the curve, globalization, we are merging with another something, we are privatizing, we are doing quality management. These are statements that leadership in the corporate environment, they don't release really these words thinking that you just go and do it. But they are adding to your mental stability. God help you. That it doesn't take you out of place. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let's quickly go into, let me just zero in because of time, how to manage our head really as people of God. That's why we're here tonight. All of these things I've been saying since, how do we, what should, what should we now do? What's the way out? That I'll be able to stay in my leadership position at home, in my workplace, in church, in the family, as a father, as a mother, as the first child in the family, you are the firstborn, and you have like six siblings. Maybe your parents, they are like a Nigerian coach. There are plenty of players, you know, and you are the first one. And all of them calling you, and maybe all of them, they are not yet stable financially. This one is calling you. Uh, by 25, 26, you'll be receiving call. Uncle, they never, I never do this. As if you don't have your own family. What do we do? What should we do? The first thing the scripture says, the first thing is wisdom. The Bible talks about the person of Jesus in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, that Jesus is both power and wisdom of God. The power part is talking about praying to, to, to receive the power of God and to get things done. But the wisdom part, wisdom to manage our time, wisdom, or even applying, the, okay, if God doesn't want us to use um, fancy paracetamol and the likes, why did he allow people to go and study? Why did he, he gave the wisdom of mercy, pharmacies and the likes. So if he has given them the wisdom of the wisdom to pharmacies to produce drugs, then that means God is saying we should take advantage of that. Wisdom of medication, the wisdom of planning, wisdom of delegation. When you do this, apply wisdom to do this in your leadership capacity to live where you live fresh and you'll be able to get results. Are we together? Are we together? The wisdom of consulting. You don't know everything. Like I told you earlier, I come to daddy, yes, say, sir. So, so, and so, what do I do, sir? What about, I don't know, sometimes I come, my wife is thinking, my wife is saying, she will say, ah, Pastor Femi, this is what you should do. And as I'm living, I feel refreshed. I just, when I get to, I just execute what you have told me, and they will know that I borrowed the wisdom from somewhere else. I don't read my shoulder and say, okay, the heads of the house have spoken. It's not for me. I consulted. Hello? I consulted. Just ask somebody who is older, who is bigger, who knows better, to take the pressure of you. Otherwise, this thing will weigh you down and it will affect your effectiveness, affect your productivity. What about the wisdom of cancer? The Bible says in the multitude of cancer, there is what? Safety. We know that. That is applying wisdom. What about the wisdom of mentor, mentee? Ladies and gentlemen, by the grace of God, I'm an author. Write books. I have like two upcoming now. I'm learning from daddy. Praise God. Now, when I'm writing, even when I'm not, not even the book, when I'm doing writing and I'm maybe sending things, I have some of my mentees who I know that these people, they are in their 22, 23. Me, I study, I told you I did my NYC in 1990 something. My grandma may have been outdated, I know. So I relate with these people. When I finish my writing, I'll send it to one or two of them. Mary, can you help me proofread this thing and send it back to me? By the time they correct it, I <laughs> I sent to another one who is operating the corporate, corporate world, just 24. They are sons for me. And they, they, get, they give me feedback. And with that, the pressure of, hey, if you send this thing to maybe I want to send it to somebody who is higher than me. Relate with people that are above you or that are beneath you. It's wisdom so that you can be fresh and still be productive. What about the wisdom of teamwork? The wisdom of technology. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says Jesus is both what? Wisdom and power of God. A lot of people, particularly in the church environment, we only lean on that of the power alone. The power alone. But Jesus is both, is both two feathers making him to fly. Wisdom and power. The next thing here as we solve this problem of mental health is your word life. Pay attention to your word life. When I want to talk about your word life, the word of God that we hear every day. How often do you speak out this word? Confessing the word, professing the word. Leading and living by the word of God. Practicing forgiveness. 
practice it for as in practice forgiveness as in, like normal life. Serving humanity. At that, there was a time in my life there was no work, then no, as in no job really. I was ready to work for free. I met few organizations. I said, I don't want you to pay me. I can do this. I can do this. I can. I don't even mind you paying me transport. I don't have a car. Then many years ago, I think that was the first two years or thereabout of my marriage. I was ready to. Work. I don't want to sit down at home. I want to add value to humanity. Praise the Lord. Doing that gives me joy. In that way, you'll be fresh. Number next, quickly. How do you manage your heads as a leader? The third one is work out. Work out is simply talking about exercise. Either indoor or outdoor. These days now we don't encourage outdoor exercise because of the carry you they ask for million. But you can do exercise in your compound. You can do exercise in your bedroom. You can do exercise even in your, in your bedroom. Do exercise. Let the body, you know, you get to the office, you sit down from morning till like nine, five o'clock in the evening. By the time you are leaving the office, you are sitting there in your car for another on, an hour or two. If you live in Lagos, you may spend like three hours between when you leave office to and when you get to your house. So you are sitting down for almost 12 hours in a day. Oh boy, after some time, your lumbar will tell you that I don't want to stand straight again. I need to bend. And you learn like this. Are we together? Time will not permit me to go deep into this thing because I'm, I'm, I'm almost out of here. Sometimes, there is this thing called stretch ball. We are looking under, feeling under pressure. Don't pick it. Don't pick it in the supermarket. It, it, there's a way it relieves your, you out of stress and pressure that you are experiencing. You just press it again and again and again. What about massage? People do that and people go for that. Managing your body. That scripture, I was blown away when I saw that scripture. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Look at it. Physical training is of some value. Look at the one in comma. Useful for a little. And I told myself, if it is useful, at least for a little, let me maximize that, that little so that I can live long. Please, let's run. The next one is how do we manage our heads as leaders? Your way of life. Your way of life. One of my mentors in the city is 71. He told me that he stopped meat eating meat 30 years ago. He stopped eating meat 30 years ago. This man is 71. He's a big servant of God in this town. Recently, again, I was listening to um, uh, Pastor Matthew Ashimolo in an interview from uh, Olumide Emmanuel. Is it Olumide or Femi Emmanuel? One of them, one of the Emmanuels. Inter Olumide, sir. Uh, Matthew Ashimolo is 70. He's 71 now. Thank you, sir. He said, he mentioned so many things that he stopped eating at 22, that 22 years ago, uh, 23 years ago, one of it, he said, I stopped eating Gary 24 years ago. I heard that one very well. I no wonder why you see Matthew Ashimolo at 71. So he's looking very fresh and strong. Nobody say, I will get money. It's not about money. It's the wisdom. Dieting. Food, you get just because the money is there, enter a restaurant and pick everything. You want to eat like Yahoo Yahoo boys. Have you seen Yahoo Yahoo boys when they are eating in a restaurant? Have you seen them before? When you enter a restaurant, when you, when you sit at the table, you will know this one is the brain is not normal. All manner of things. All manner. The person that is eating, fingers very dirty, very disorganized. In fact, sometimes smelling. For us, it should not be like that. Let's control our diets. Let's have eating habits. Let's have structured life. Sleep well. Let's manage our relationship well. You have people that when you talk to them, they get you smile. Connect with them. I just want to hear your voice for me. How are you doing? Hi, ah, uncle. <laughs> oh, you've left us. That gist for three minutes. Very therapeutic. I'm speaking from a professional point of view. Very therapeutic. You've been, everybody that I've been talking to you since morning, they are asking for this. They are demanding. This other person, you know, this one will not ask for anything. It will just make you laugh. Call that person. It will help you. You don't eat very therapeutic. You don't be looking fresh. You go to bed light, empty. For me, when I want to go to bed, <laughs> like a baby. I do my dinner between seven or thereabouts. Like a baby, when it's time, I just lie down. I don't go. I don't go. When I wake up, I, I'm, an, I'm an under rest. By four, I'm up. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let me move on because of time. Then this other will wind down. Learn to wind down. What, I, what do I mean by wind down? Four few things that have under wind down, winding down. Learn to relax. Take time off. Learn to rest. And after this slide, I'm going to that second to the last slide, and I will be done. And that's why I have it there 
rest plus. There are about seven different type of rest that we should be experiencing so that we can look fresh and recover our body so that we can stay healthy playing our leadership role. They go out to vacation. People will see when people hear that somebody's going for vacation, they took get money. It's not about getting too much money. By the grace of God, now in the month of November, I'm planning to go early December. I'm going to Ghana. Nobody said the money there. I just want to go. I'm already planning it. Just to go and fresh. Just to go and fresh. And I believe maybe we thank God will bless me. I just go to somewhere further and just um, see a new environment. In that place, nobody knows me. No, it's no Pastor Julius. There is no uh, so and so. Uh, there is this program. I know day. I am freshing my I'm just I'm just want to. And it's not about the money. It's about the fact that I want to remain healthy, functional, and impactful. Otherwise, when you pack up, the work will continue. Hello? When you pack up, I will not pack up in Jesus' name. That's why we are sharing this together. Learn to take time out. Learn to listen to music. For me, I like, Daddy, I hope it will not be a sin. I listen to, I listen to Ebenezer Obey a lot. In my car. I, I, every now and then, my daughter knows so much of this, of this song. I, when I listen, it helps my brain. When I'm working on my system, I'm just listening. And I'm still born again. Praise God. I'm still born again. I'm still born again. I don't listen. And you know, if you know obey song, for those of us who probably his songs are not vulgar, they are not dirty, he's talking about life, speaking of wisdom. I don't it just helps my brain to re, 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 get reprogram and just stay fresh. Praise the Lord. My time is running very fast. Regular checkup and diagnosis. Take time, go under the machine, check yourself. It doesn't have to be the big dialysis of a something something million. Regularly, every free free month, just go and check. Get to know your blood pressure. Get to know your 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 sugar level. Get to know it. Don't assume. I know we have faith. We are people of God. God is protecting us. God, but, and you see, you have faith. You don't want your you want your head to be okay. And you eat a lot of carbohydrates again and again. Listen, your sugar level is increasing. Hyperglycerin. <laughs> Fufu. I don't eat that thing. If for nothing, for the smell, I don't even eat it. I don't want to eat it and hear the speed that my mind, my hand is smelling. What are certain things that are certain things you should not take again? I've been telling my wife, so no, give me meat again. No, I don't want meat again. He said it will cost more. I said let it cost more. It will cost more in the housekeeping because you should want me. Yeah, I don't want meat again. I want at 70, I want to be like this man that I'm hearing and I'm relating with. I still want to be here if Jesus has not come. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Sixth, second to the last one is, I call it WWW, World Wide Web. Take advantage of the global network. Relate to people. If you can from here speak to your boss who left your, your Nigeria six months ago, who is in America right now. Say, sir, oh, what about this? So, so. Meanwhile, meanwhile if, he's, if he's around, probably you can walk to him, but he's somewhere else now. Just a call, just a chat on your phone, and you get to him. You get to her. You glean on his her wisdom. You connect. And you take pleasure of you. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Last but not least is the fact that work and work in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Please, please give us John chapter 14, verse 26. John 14, 26. I think I'm almost done. Look at what the scripture says. It said, this Holy Spirit is our helper. Whom the Father will send, and he's been saying now, he's already here. And like this part, he said, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I say to you. When we read this scripture, we only think it's the scripture. Or you remember, or remind us the Bible alone. For me, the Holy Spirit don't only remind me Bible. It reminds me almost everything. I'm telling you. And because I don't claim to know everything. It's the Holy Spirit. In fact, there's a particular place in my house. <laughs> once I enter into that place, once I come out like this, and I tell my wife, on oh, so, so, and so, she doesn't argue. She knows that place I sit, now there, go sit down. Something fresh will come. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So these are the views I'm sharing with us tonight as to how to manage our heads so that we remain healthy as leaders and be the best that God wants us to be. All right, let's move to the next one. Just put it there. It's about rest. I'm not going to dwell on this quickly, but let's go to the type of rest and I'll be done. Like I said, seven type of rest. There are about seven, there are seven of them. The, one, the first one is what we call physical rest, as in rest away from the taking intentional break from physical activities that you do on a daily basis and if you do this it will help you to be able to repair recover and reduce and reduce pressure 
You repair your system, it will, you take pressure off you. If you intentionally take rest from the physical activities, sometimes for, for shop owners, every Monday to Saturday you go to shop. Monday to Saturday, just because you want to make more money. No, now. Monday to Saturday, you go to work. Your own shop that you own by yourself. And on Sunday, you come to church. You now leave church around. Maybe I don't know when we close there. No time to rest at all. Like on, in my place of work, I have an arrangement with the organization. On Monday, past and no day. If you see me, you are very lucky. I'm just in my house, resting, watching TV, sleeping, eating like a small boy. I want to remain fresh so that when you ask me something, I'm able to deliver. Rest. Rest. And how do we do that? Take a nap, practice breathing exercise, go for a walk, stretch, get light massage, lay down, either up or down. In this way, you'll be able to get physically. And I say this will help you to, re it will, it will, your muscle will be repaired and be able to recover from the stress it's gone through. It ultimately reduces fatigue. The second type of rest is we want to call mental rest. It's, taking, it's talking about taking a break from constant mental stimulations that we face every day. Some, you know, every now and then when you go to the office, this one is asking you for this. As you are looking at the system, you are saying, okay, what do we do? You are programming, you are doing this, you are doing that. You are putting so much pressure on your mental capacity. You do that consistently over time. After some time, the thing would have been, remember I told you leadership stretches. We have been stretched. And when you get stretched, you now get used to that thing. And you cannot function in any other area. It's very dangerous. What's the effect of this? It enhances your learning ability will be enhanced. Your ability to process information will be reinvigorated because you've taken mental rest. Where do you do that? Or how do you do that? A lot of people are phone addicts. Even at night, they left their phones. As early as four, they are already with the phone. Looking for what? I wish the phone is bringing plenty of millions. I wish. Take a break. Because when you are looking at the phone, you are stretching your, your eye like this. Or maybe you are using glasses like me. You are using, okay, what if, and you want to store the information just because you've bought a phone. It should not be. Intentionally avoid social media. Practice medication. The next, emotional rest. It means taking a break from emotional demands that we face every day. Particularly mothers. Mothers. Can you call your younger sister? Can you call a, sis, a friend? Say, please, today, come help me do school runs. <laughs> come help me do school runs. Can you drive? Yeah, you can. Oh, let me get a driver for you. Say, what, what's happening to you, mommy? So, 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 so. I'm okay. I'm okay. I just want to rest. These children, they will not kill me. I want to enjoy my husband. Can you take a rest? From all, because the children say, mommy, give me this. You can imagine. Sometimes, a few days, when I have, I have my opportunity of driving out of my workplace in the morning, I see more that sometimes you have like six children at the back, two in the front, and you see one woman sweating, driving, with traffic, you press one, and you don't want to get to school late. And you do that from Monday to Friday. On Saturday, you go for shopping. On Sunday, you are in church. Back to back to back to back. Ah. I mean, at 60, sorry, let's say at 50, you are not looking like somebody who is 75. And that is not looking at your face. You will say the man is looking outside. He's not looking outside. You are cursing. You are this. You are you are breaking the connection. Are we together? That will not permit me to to then go deep into this thing. But I believe we are getting this. Manage your head. It's your responsibility. How do we do this? Spend time alone. Avoid stressful situation. Practice self care. That was very intentional. Take care of yourself. Enter a restaurant. Don't go with husband. Don't go with children. Hey, children, let's go. No, go alone. You are not looking for anything. You just want to sit down and eat alone. And just look at nature everywhere. And it will help. Very therapeutic. I'm speaking from a professional point of view. It will help you. By the time you come back, you are fresh. Just tell anybody, today I know they enter kitchen. I want to go and sleep. Just have that discussion with your spouse. By the time you wake up the next morning, you will be stronger and smarter. Your reasoning will be sharper. That's the truth. You'll be sharper. <laughs> Practice journaling. Spend time with nature. The next one is what we call sensory rest. This is very powerful. Sensory rest means taking a break from constant sensory impulse, inputs that we receive on a daily basis. Such that come with light, sound, and other external stimuli. When we talk about sensory, you know, our sensitivity Beyond what you are saying, there are things that you are exposed to that triggers reactions, make you to do certain things. Shut yourself down from such things for some time. 
Otherwise, your system gets used to them and you're unable to fit into another environment if you get there. That's why some people experience cultural shifts. When you get into a new country, when you get into a new environment, it's like, ah, see, I can't find my place. Recently, I watch a video, a lady crying. Go to Canada, I said, there are no friends around here. People there in Canada, now you will see them. You are, not, you are not connecting to them. I don't know whether some of us have seen that video. How can you put a video of yourself? God help you. You are now in another country where you are there to make money. You are not crying. Say there are no friends. Excuse me. You went to Canada for friends in the first place. You don't go there for friends. Connect. Take advantage. Do video call with all your friends in Nigeria if you must talk to friends. You're not putting your face on social media and crying. It's lack of wisdom. It's lack of wisdom. Sensory rest. My time is up. I need to stop. Creative rest. All right. Uh, creative rest will help you help your mind to explore new ideas. It will help you to stay inspired and motivated. This is very important. It's very important. It will help you, your mind to explore new, new thinking. And we help you it will inspire you and get you to stay motivated. These are the places you can know how to get it. Um, social rest is also there. This one will help you to recharge and maintain um, your emotional balance. So emotional boundary, boundaries. Because sometimes, because of the fact that you are a people person, you relate with a lot of people. Uh, people see you, everybody wants to take from you, everybody will take, take from you. Hey, Jim, let's do this. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Can you just shut down from this emotional stuff and just be alone? You are not caring for anybody. It will help you a great deal. You stay fresh and stronger. And last but not the least is spiritual rest. Very powerful. I'm not going to go into that. We've had so much of that in the house. It's so important. Jesus, he said, come unto me. All you do, that labor and are heavy leading. He said, I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11. He said, I will give you rest. I will even give rest for your soul. And that is talking about soul from the beginning of this meeting. Rest for your soul. And once your soul is at rest, your spirit is at rest, obviously your body will be at rest. You'll be fresh. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. I say, may the Lord help us in Jesus' name. I have this fact that I want you to consider. Please go to the yellow part, hard fat. This will be where I will stop. Your head is fighter to your leadership, efficiency, effectiveness, and establishment. Very true. The voice of your leadership is dependent on the states of your head. The value you bring as a leader it's a function of the amount of time you spent alone studying, reading, or researching. But only the healthy can study. Does that make sense? Only those who are healthy can study. Visibility is said to be vision plus ability. But only the healthy have abilities. The last but not the least is the volume of money or influence you command as a person is directly proportional to the vitality of your head. Ladies and gentlemen, what are we saying tonight? Your head is as important. Your, your mental head is as important as your spiritual head. Let's take responsibility for it. We'll be able to live long enough to fulfill destiny and impart our world. Thank you and God bless you. A round of applause again, again, and again, and again, and again. Thank you, sir. Let's go with my brother here and his nickname. Let's say what? And of course, and then hard facts from vitality about six of them, vital voice value. It's not just one of our thoughts. Sir, I hope you wouldn't mind, though we have your sight, but we don't take it. already on our kind of in and again good Thank you so much.
So, five M's of management. I had four. What would be? If you want to reel them, I'll start. Take more questions. This is your question. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm going to throw the question back to us. Guess what? That, that statement wasn't part of it. It just came. And it's not part of the study. But I remember studying that many years ago as a student of management, of engineering management. But I know, I recall that for you, they said the, the, there are five M in management. And man is the hardest of the five. So we have man, we have method, you have machine, you have money. I can't pick the fifth one. I'm trying to do Material, thank you. So that's the fifth one. Let's say it together. The first one, man, method, machine, money, and materials. These are the five steps of management. And as a leader, these are what we manage every now and then, consciously or unconsciously, intentionally or unintentionally. And if you don't manage them well, they're likely to fail in leadership. Very true. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. A round of applause for him again. If you don't mind, sir, would you, would you mind throwing more light on? We live in very uh, interesting times, I'd like to say. Throw more light on this financial part of the wellness, how to manage financial food. It appears to be a major factor of course. Okay, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He, um, the financial part of that wellness wheel is the fact that a lot of people, they don't have a uh, financial structure. Structure in the sense that, it's, you know, people that seem to, that will look at that, they seem to look like, oh, they are ready, they are enjoying themselves. Majority of them are applying wisdom that people, maybe people below the ladder are not, are not applying. And what do I mean? Um, no matter the amount of money that comes to you, there should be uh, you should structure it in such a way that you have the same way you structure, you know that 10% of your income goes to who? Goes to who? God. That doesn't mean a part of the night will still not go, but at least that one is statutory. Are we together? So you structure what goes out to God. You know your movement within the city. You structure it. Okay, this particular amount will go for my transport. My head is necessary at the end of three months. I'm going for my, uh, for my uh, maybe check off. You structure a particular amount. In fact, if you want to help yourself very well, you can open different accounts, different bank accounts to handle these things. That this one is for upkeeps in the house. Maybe 10, 20 percent of your income, whatever percentage that you know you can handle. This one is for upkeeps in the house. This one is for projects that we are working towards. You know, sometimes somebody collect a big amount of money. You carry like 70, 80 percent of that money to go and drop on projects. Oh God, we not go eat for house. Oh God, we not go wear clothes. Children will go to school and other responsibility. So what we mean by for you to be able to enjoy wellness in the area of finances, structure your finance. You know what comes to your hand. Let there be a particular percentage going for uh, uh, upkeeps. Let be a particular percentage going for um, uh, maybe the projects. Let be a particular percentage going for maybe family um, responsibility. Let be a particular percent going for yourself, taking care of yourself and maybe your spouse and all of that. In that way, you take away pressure from you. Sometimes money should not be spent on impulse as the money comes. You just say, okay, wow, the money don't land, let's go. No, no, no. In that way, the, the moment the money goes down, the pressure will, what? will return. That's what we are saying. So structure your finance. That's what we, we are saying. No matter how small or big the income you have may be, but structure your finance. Don't respond. Don't let it be that as you receive it, you just, you just go into the market and begin to pick everything pickable. That's what we are saying. In that way, the pressure will be less. Praise God. What of us you don't have an income? <laughs> Praise God. If you don't have an income at all, does that mean you sleep, you wake up, you go, you go back home, or you sleep in the evening? As in, it's, like I said earlier, in the first two years of my marriage, before I got married, I was working as church administrator in the Redeemed Church Stadium Room, um, NTA Road, Redeemed Christian Church of God. And I was working as a church secretary. My salary then was about 25000 or thereabouts. Well, no complaint. Guess what? I already told my wife, baby girl, and I brought her from another state. This is me. This is how much I collect. 
This is so let's manage this. And when I left that job with the, with the promise that I will get a job from Lagos, the job that I talked about that took me around and all of that. So be, that for like six months, there was no job. I said, Auntie, how do we manage? I said, Guess what? I'll never forget. That's why she'll be my wife till I see the Lord in glory. That time, I don't have a job. I was ready to do a uh, mini job. Nobody was even giving me. My wife will use 200 naira to do chin chin. I was already a pastor in my church oh, to do chin chin of 200 of is it 50 50 naira and sell to people in the community from there will take a meal for the day that's for the married but if it's a single person who is not doing anything who has not gotten a job you can volunteer go help people that you know around sir can i wash your car you'll be wicked after washing your car you're not even giving me i'm not asking you to give me but you and after washing you'll give me something Sir, do you have any laundry? Can I come and clean your house? Sir, I'm, I'm told that you are moving from your house to a new house. Can I come and help you do parking? Can I help you do something? Just volunteer. People will respond. But somebody say there is no job, there is no money, and you are waiting for money, and you are saying no, 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 no. no. Be ready. Remember, the, Jesus' view of, of leadership is what? Service. Bring out yourself to serve. Whoever you want to serve, whoever you think can take your service, present yourself first. And money, you know money flows through the direction of service. Hello? Uh, money doesn't flow to do somebody is I do. It's either you are using your hand or you are using your brain. At least you are doing something. Money will come. In that way, God will not make provision for the bigger one. That's our belief. Praise God. Awesome, sir. Round of applause. Thank you so much, sir. You gave us some truths. I will call them hard truths. People told Jesus some of the truths that they left him. So these things you are saying, they are hard. They are hard ones. We talk about um, toughness, tedious, okay. careful, um, Ever leadership, sensitive, up to the transform, transform, yes. transform. And then when you look at this um, hard truth, they are totally at variance with mental health, mental health, you know, having good mental health. They so want to be tough, these things are hard. And then you want to have good, um, calm mental health. Mm. How do you have? Okay, thank you for that question. It means you didn't get the explanation. When I was giving this truth, I'm saying these are the things that as leaders you find yourself experiencing in the course of you playing your role as a leader. As a leader, you go through pains that bring you physical tears or invisible tears. Leadership is tensive because it puts pressure on you. So we are not saying you should do it. I'm not saying all these things are not the things I say you should do, but what leadership takes from you. It transforms you. It tests you. It trains you. That's what we are saying in that discussion. No, we are not saying that that's what you should do. But as a leader, it is tedious to stay in the position of leadership, to manage people. Not like we just talked about the 5M, to manage people. This one is very hard. You can imagine manage, having a team of, maybe you are a very soft, phlegmatic person, and you have like a team of six persons, and four of them are choleric. Talking about temperament, I'm sure we know temperament, right? <laughs> Four of them are choleric, strong will. The people don't take me. As we are talking, they are even rubbishing. You say, Oh, Gami, I know Grio, and they are saying it to you. And meanwhile, the, the organization, the leaders, issue at the, at the highest level have given you a task. And meanwhile, you have these tough, in, 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 no nonsense members of your team. How do you manage such people? And when you are done doing your brief, you enter your office, you are, like, you are just pacing. Jesus, how am I going to deal with him? Because this boy is very stubborn. God. If you're, if you're like, God, what do I do? In that way, you are going through a process that if you don't manage very well, it can affect your, even your composure. It can affect your personality. It can affect your relationship. When you are packing your bag after the closing hour, and you're going home, you get to the house, you're going to say, only way come. You're not smiling. Not because somebody has beaten you, because there is an maker in your team who is not cooperating. And his uncompetitive attitude is giving you pressure because you know that if he doesn't move, we won't be able to reach our goal. Are we together? So leadership is tasking. We are not saying you should do it, but that that's what happened to you. If you are actually a leader, you must go through these things. But we are saying manage them. Be sensitive to them. Don't allow them to tear you apart. That's why we go to. Awesome, sir. God bless you, sir. Someone is asking, and I hope our people are putting their questions together so we come to the congregation. Sir, how can you... One of our people is asking, sir, how can you support a friend or family member that has mental health issues from time to time. Okay. Praise the Lord. How can you support a family member who is, uh, that has mental health issues? If 
uh, if he or she is not living within your vicinity, take time to do uh, what I call a, a checklist. Put up a checklist of what he or she is experiencing. Because mental health, like I said, at the, at the beginning, there is no visible sign that you are going through mental health. Right? But something is tearing you apart. A member of the family, do you know sometimes in a family, uh, some, some, uh, maybe one of the siblings would just feel that daddy is favoring so so and so person too much. And so, you just develop hatred for your brother. Because he or she seems to be getting all the shine, getting all the attention and all of that. And that is affecting his or her flow with other members of the family. What do you do? You call in. Ask necessary questions. Sit down. That's what we call it diagnosis. Sit down and ask him sincere, genuine questions. Factual, if possible, face to face. Travel down. Say, uh, Philip, I'm coming to so so and so. One, more. let's talk. As in, you are opening your book to read out the question one after the other. I noticed that you have not been doing so so and so. I noticed that you have been doing, after you must have prayed, obviously, and probably seek counsel from professionals. As in, asking for this is what you are experiencing. And I want to go and handle. They will tell you what to do. In that way, you'll be able to help the person. Because if you meet a, a, a family member, say, I noticed you're having mental issue. It could give you a slap immediately. You mean I'm mad? But I've noticed that you've not been responding very well. Even our family once have, you know they talk. What's wrong? You say, I know you don't want to talk. No, you want to talk. I want you to talk. But why are you not talking? Something is going on. Maybe there is a discord. Maybe he's having beef with some, somebody and all of that. So the, the first approach is to make direct contact with that person to be able to uh, get the right, what the person is going through. What the person, if you have information around the person as well, you can do that by asking if the person is married. First of all, ask his wife on phone or physically and notice your husband is this and this. Is it true? But why is this? Have you done something? What have you done? If you get the right information, fine. But if you don't meet the person directly with properly analyzed questions that will help you to be able to get to the root of what he or she is going through and provide solution depending on what will be required. If it is money, if it is relocation, if it is uh, support, if it is um, more, um, like getting a job or something that will help that person. There are a lot of people in, in the city here. Uh, by the reason of my privileged position, work uh, and uh, association work, uh, in the uh, Counseling Society of Nigeria, River State Chapter, sometimes when we come to a meeting, when they bring different issues that they call, it, they call them ad notes, and they bring them to the table for us, to other counselors to hear, so that from there we can take, you know, gain knowledge. There was one that was brought into, the, into our meeting, and I'm like, God, how do people handle this kind of let me share them with you and i'll just be okay with this question they said there's this particular uh, family and the youngest in the family the youngest in the family is about 22 like three other members of the family they've done their first degree they move abroad and all of that and dad and mom already retired all in all in nigeria i think maybe in Prakot or lagos now this young boy who is 22 is done with university and he said he doesn't want to do anything again i said why you don't you could even go for your masters? You could go to your masters abroad. Your brothers are there. Say he doesn't want to do anything again. You know his, his grudge. He felt that the second, third, fourth of the sibling, because the first one entered into money very quickly, moved them abroad. They finished. They did their first degree abroad. But the family forced and the father decided that if all of you go abroad early, you leave us here alone. That their father is about seventy something. Mom. Made 60 something and so the father out of his own desire to have the last born around said no you people should not allow that one to go abroad let him stay at least six years in nigeria with us let's enjoy him a little bit so one member of the family link the information to the boy in his final year and he go angry so daddy because of your service interest to have me around so because of that i know the ghost again i'm going to be the turn in all of you's flesh they are still begging him they say what do we do it's a scenario presented to us and he was advised, the father will need to take responsibility to tell him, I did it selfishly, or I'm sorry. That was the diagnosis. So, confront the person, ask sincere questions, and where there is need for, to beg for forgiveness, just be sincere. Be hoping. In that way, the person will be helped, and the problem probably will be solved. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's clap for our guests. <laughs> the Thank you, awesome wisdom. We will often say in this house, what wisdom is this? I think this will be the last question. Any question? Okay, just one more and we are, we are done. Our father taught us in the house. 
various levels of relationship, association. I don't bring that this one. <laughs> with God. He taught us right, so. various levels. Okay. Um, first one being relationship with God, God the um, Almighty. And then you graduate to fellowship. Yes. If you master relationship and, and God approves of your relationship with him, you can graduate to fellowship mm. as you, you master it. And then the highest level being partnership. Partnership, friendship with God. I believe that with what you just taught us today, told us today, somebody who has mental health issues is in a dilemma. Yeah. How does this person even begin to talk about relationship with God optimally, maximally, when this, kind of, this person has this kind of challenges? Not to now mention graduating to fellowship and then partnership. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now, the essence of this discourse is to help us in a different leadership position to be able to help ourselves first do a check on yourself to be sure that you are not carrying too much pressure and you are not delivering less than what you are supposed to. If you are getting bashed again and again from your boss, it's a sign that you are not living up to expectations, something is wrong somewhere. But now, if it's someone on the basis of, okay, you've been, you are in a spiritual environment and you are suffering these things, Sometimes people that have a uh, mental health issue, sometimes they don't know. The responsibility is on people around them to notice it. Yes, you pray, but you can ask, confront. I notice that you don't do it. Like one of the uh, examples of a mental illness is eating disorder. It's eating disorder. Bipolar. By, by some somebody, today you are exaggerated tomorrow. You are, as a brother, a leader, in the house, in the family, in the church, you notice that, ah, Sister Choma, this is not you I used to know six months ago. What happened? You should know. From there, you know that he's been searching. He don't work around Potako. He don't get a job. You expect somebody who has not gotten a job to be smiling in church. He won't smile. But the fact that you are able to help to discuss and you find out that this is what he or she is going through is a, is, a, is a way out of that problem. So, the solution and what I'm trying to say is this. If someone is going through a mental issue, he or she may not be aware, aside from praying for the person that I know that as church, in the church will pray for each other, you can also ask, connect. Even if you cannot ask, you can tell a leader who you know can handle the issue, either the overall leadership or the unit leader. I noticed that social and so person is not like this. In that case, please, I don't want to meet him because if I meet him, we are a colleague and he may shout or she may shout on me, but this is what I noticed. I'm not too sure. Can we help him? Because I noticed that this is not the him I'm, I used to see three months ago. He doesn't talk with anybody again. He doesn't come to church like before. He's a bit on the. He's a bit edgy now. You have to say, no, no, leave me. Hey, hey, I don't do my. Own. Hey, hey, hey. And this same person six months ago, very lively, very lovely, very caring, he associated with everyone. Something is going on in her life or his life, as the case may be. So, aside from praying, con make contact with the person, and that contact will be either you or a leader that he or she refers that he or she submits to. In that way, you're able to help. Once the issue is identified, then the way out will be very easy. Otherwise, it will affect his relationship with God. And we'll call him on spiritual. I know sometimes when your mental is not okay, you commit a lot of sins. Hello, anger, hatred, jealousy, and the likes. You don't be angry with everybody. Small things don't get you peace off. Unforgive forgiveness will be very difficult for you. When pastor is preaching forgiveness, say, me, because he's not happy. There are other things associated with that he or she is battling with in the inside. He's only using unforgiveness as a sign. We only seen unforgiveness as a sign. So it's important that as church people, let's show God's let's show God's love to our people. Aside from praying for them, let's make contact with them. Relationship. One of the greatest gifts after salvation and the Holy Spirit is relationship. People. I am here today because Daddy has shown great love for me. Please let me clap for him one more time. <laughs> Amazing servant of God. He didn't discard me. He didn't know me. I mean, I was like, oh. And he said, my door is open again and again. That's relation. Showing me love. You are listening to me again and again. And I'm where I am now. So please, let's know that we have a responsibility to care for one another. After, Bible, after all, the Bible says, one of the things he said we should do for one another is so what? He said, well, let's care for one another. That care doesn't actually me bring food to my house. Be show genuine concern about me and what I'm going through. And in that way, we make the body of Christ lovely, lively, and long-lasting. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you so much. I've learned a lot. And I believe not just myself alone, every one of us has learned something. 
so thank you very much wonderful for our pastor. I want to say thank you for finding that time to come and share with us this truth. Thank you so much. God bless you. I uh, want to recognize very special people in our miss. If today happens to be the very first time you are worshiping with us, or if someone invited you, anybody, 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 or oh, lovely, can you just stand on your feet if you don't mind? Oh, please, can we just give her a warm welcome? Let's give her a warm welcome quickly. Those around that, thank you for coming. This is International House of His Presence. Uh, our money is to make God's presence known and felt all over the head using every godly means. We appreciate you for honoring the invitation. You may have your seat. Thank you so much. We meet on Sundays from 9 o'clock in the morning till 11, 11 30 thereabout. And we meet on Wednesdays for our discovery service from 6 p.m. to 7 15 where we are taught God's word. Then on Saturday mornings, we pray. We are praying church. For now, we pray in the uh, via the Zoom platform in the clouds. So uh, the details is 30, 40, sorry, 30, 50, 60, 70, 80. And the passcode is prayer, all lowercase. Uh, so we'd like to encourage you, if you don't have any place you worship, that you call a church your church, We'll be glad to see you again. So tomorrow, if you are opportune, please come and worship with us and the Lord will bless you. After we share the grace, some group of people, the reinforcement team will just meet you briefly to know more about it. The Lord bless you. Remember, we're coming back tomorrow morning by 9 a.m. for Kingdom Life Service. Let's invite someone and I believe that your life will not remain the same in Jesus' name. Let's rise up as we share the benediction. Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. One to go. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of everlasting covenant, make me complete in every good work to do his will, working in me what is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. See you tomorrow morning.